Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first and foremost, of course, today is the day where we do see the FOMC meeting uh, officially come out and we do see, you know, rate hikes from the Fed. Uh, we could be seeing, you know, 75 or plus BPS or 75 or under, uh, which would be preferred for the market to sustain these levels that we are currently seeing on the, uh, you know, list right now. I am recording this a little bit ahead of time, so these prices are most likely going to change drastically or not. Um, but definitely, you know, watch for today with the Fed, um, you know, basically discussing what they are going to do next. Um, if we don't see, you know, the Fed pivoting this time around, we will most likely see it happen in the fall time frame, which actually would coincide with, you know, the entire market having a relief rally from around like the end of this year into, of course, like the quarter two of 2023. Um, I know that a lot of people have been, you know, looking at the macro economics, which of course I have been addressing on this channel for a little bit of time. Um, but I do think that we have a little bit of leeway with that. Um, and I don't believe that we will see like a cascading move within the markets just yet. Um, I think that they're kind of easing us into it. But uh, yeah, with that being said, let's move on and let's talk about a few things happening around XRP. And uh, yeah, with that in mind, first and foremost, we do see from James K. Fallon, uh, breaking Judge Torres denies the SEC's motion to revoke Amacy status and bar Johnny Deaton 1 from further proceedings. Amacy can't participate in expert challenge now, but may file application to brief uh, concerns with the SEC's expert at summary judgment. And this is actually a very, very huge win, not only for, uh, you know, Ripple, but it's also a huge win for the XRP community. This not only allows for individuals like Johnny Deaton and even XRP holders to participate here. Um, but it also, you know, just kind of shows you that I would say that this kind of shows you that the judge is uh, a little bit fed up with the SEC's, you know, motions to not only hide things, but also kind of shut out the public from, you know, the eye around this, you know, case. I think that that's like the main issue right now around um, this entire case is just the idea that the SEC has been trying to push their agenda around trying to hide things from the public, trying to, you know, kind of play into their ball uh, game. But, you know, I think that right now we are seeing some major moves happening, not only for, you know, like I said, Ripple, but also the XRP community. And we, of course, do see like John Deaton is slowly achieving legend status. I would say that he has been uh, already a legend for the XRP community. And also, uh, talking about things happening around the SEC lawsuit and talking about XRP itself, we do see here, you know, XRP accounts are hitting all-time high uh, day by day while sc uh, scarcity of XRP is increasing. UK will announce crypto law in August. We wanted a flare to see it. Uh, and we do see, you know, now we have Flare Networks in September, uh, Swift ISO 222 in November 2022, and we do see Ripple Lawsuit is coming to an end. Probably nothing, but yeah, basically everything is aligning perfectly. I would say, like, even with, like, ISO 222, like, this, to me, isn't, like, a dead set, like, huge, you know, thing for the, the market. I've always said, like, ISO 222 um, allows for these tokens to be utilized as settlement and liquidity, you know, bridges on the networks that they are utilized on. Like, for example, RippleNet can utilize XRP as a liquidity source and settlement token. It also al uh, aligns them uh, in terms of, like, the network itself with legacy systems. So that's basically what ISO 222 means. Uh, do I think that it's going to be, you know, big for these tokens? Not necessarily. It all depends on, you know, the adoption cycle of the network. So I would say like this actually complements, you know, RippleNet utilizing XRP a lot more than like, you know, XRP's price, if you will. Um, but also, yeah, I, I do think that with the statistics around XRP, you know, things are definitely heating up. I would say definitely pay attention to the SEC case as we are seeing some major wins for Ripple, as well as like some major developments happening around Flare, around like, you know, regulations. Uh, we've been seeing regulations being really kind of streamlined from major areas around the world, including the UK. And also, we do see over here strong start to Singapore Blockchain Week with local PSP FOMO Pay using Ripple's on-demand liquidity for crypto-enabled treasury management. The future of payment infrastructure will be powered by Crypto Plus Blockchain, and we're excited to build more real-world utility. Uh, welcome to the Ripple team. And yes, I think that this was awesome. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you have probably seen this already. If you guys do follow a lot of XRP YouTubers, which I'm sure that you have, and uh, we do see here, you know, we're partnering with FOMO Pay. 
the Singapore-based uh, payments institution, to improve its cross-border treasury flows using on-demand liquidity. This will allow FOMO Pay to achieve affordable and instant settlement in uh, euros and USD globally. And yes, we do see over here, you know, FOMO Pay to utilize Ripple's on-demand liquidity for crypto-enabled treasury management. Uh, the leader in enterprise blockchain and crypto solutions, uh, Ripple, today announced a partnership with Singapore-based major payments institution FOMO Pay, uh, which will utilize Ripple's crypto-enabled enterprise technology to improve its cross-border treasury flows. And this also, uh, you know, really kind of solidifies, you know, where Ripple is positioned at in Singapore. They have been, you know, really kind of expanding rapidly in that area, which you love to see and like i said like i'm sure that a lot of you have probably already heard the news like this happened yesterday um but i want to really kind of report on this just to kind of prove to you guys like i've been saying it time and time again like on-demand liquidity is going to continue to expand rapidly even though the sec is still targeting like xrp as a token and also just so that you guys know like fomo pay is a pretty large you know payments institution like if we go over to their website we do see like some of their merchants and banks uh, like visas here mastercard american express you know apple pay google pay like this is like a payment processing uh you know company which again like it's pretty large uh and if you go over to like four banks they do have like a digital banking solution uh so basically xrp in terms of on-demand liquidity complements this system pretty well i would say uh if you guys do check out their about section as well it really kind of gives you guys the scope of this company for example we do see down here with only uh one contact one in integration and one settlement and various payment methods including nets pay and visa grab pay we uh, chat pay etc uh you know our commitment to making financial service inclusive and our award-winning technology to provide all in one service for or solution for merchants have made us a trusted partner of merchants and various financial institutions including banks credit cards etc and uh, they kind of give you guys a few breakdowns about the awards that this company has won as well uh, trusted by you know our clients and partners and you guys do see like some of their partners down here for example i don't know yeah this doesn't have a scroll uh, tab but if you do click like their clients and partners list um this kind of breaks down like the scope of this company pretty large company if i uh do say so myself so very interesting to see. I think that this is great, not only for um, you know XRP, but for on-demand liquidity in general. I think it's great for Ripple as well. Um, but yeah, if we do kind of look into this, we do see, however, traditional treasury payments are subject to the same pain points and friction as cross-border payments due to, due to the archaic sorry, infrastructure that correspondent banking relies on. In fact, an estimated $3.5 billion is spent annually to address issue issues associated with uh, treasury and liquidity, which again, I really kind of put a, a spotlight on liquidity almost in all my videos on XRP just because of how big of a crucial role plays. Uh, we do see by leveraging on-demand liquidity for treasury payments, FOMO Pay is able to get 24-7 all year round access to liquidity for Euro and USD, uh, thereby enabling you know same-day settlement globally. On-demand liquidity for treasury payments makes it easy for PSPs like FOMO Pay to improve internal business cash flows, thereby allowing them to reduce business costs and improve operations. Prior to using you know on-demand liquidity, FOMO Pay's treasury managers had to use other modes of payment in euro and usd where funds would usually take about one to two days to reach destination accounts and of course you know as one of our leading payment institutions in singapore fomo pay aims to provide our clients with more in, uh, efficient and cost-effective payment modes in different you know currencies we are excited to partner with ripple to leverage on-demand li uh, liquidity for treasury management which allows us to achieve affordable and instant settlement in euro and usd globally and hence why i said instant settlement like that this is because they will be leveraging XRP during this entire process for instant settlement. You do not get that without XRP. And uh, we do see down here with the Asia Pacific region teaming with, you know, opportunities uh, to solve existing silos and inefficiencies with payments. We're seeing many, uh, you know, forward looking financial institutions, you know, clamoring for the next evolution of payment infrastructures and notably, you know, based on crypto and blockchain technologies. This is why we are excited to launch this crypto enabled treasury management use case for on demand liquidity with inno innovative customers like FOMO Pay and uh, was the first, you know, enterprise company to leverage crypto to tackle the trillion dollar challenges with cross border payments. Trillion dollar challenges i'm telling you guys pay attention and also they do say here like fomo pay joins companies including azimo Novati, flash fx i remit tranglo sbi remit people and more who are realizing the benefits of on-demand liquidity for their business and customers and there's the the scope is so large within ripple like 
just recently as well. I know that this is a little bit of an older document now as well because this is like a day old. Um, but Ripple expands its remittance technology to the Philippines via QMB in first of its kind move. Uh, Ripple partner QMB has launched direct remittance, you know, services again through RippleNet, through the use of Ripple's, you know, financial technology, RippleNet QMB will establish a connection with China Bank, one of the top private universal banks in the Philippines to offer this service. Uh, this new service aims to offer the bank's clients an easy remittance process as well as a quick and enhanced cross-border money transfer option. I'm telling you guys, pay attention to this. Like this is major milestones. Like, I mean, XRP in terms of a token has been seen milestone after milestone. Ripple themselves expanding every single day. It is truly something remarkable uh, to say the least when we are really kind of watching a lot of these tokens. Like I've talked to you guys a little bit about Hedera and HBAR. Like it's huge when you kind of take a step back and just kind of see how fast this entire market is growing. It's something remarkable. And um, also talking about Brooks Entwistle, who was the one that was really kind of saying a lot of things around like the FOMO pay uh, partnership. He just recently uh, posted this as well on the 25th, you know, looking forward to discussing the future of digital assets, infrastructure and crypto on my panel at Singapore blockchain week, 2022 tomorrow. This of course was uh, today. Um, I know that at the time that I'm recording this, it's the 26th. This is probably going to go live at around like midnight or so. Um, but we do see down here, if you're in town, stop by the ripple booth. And uh, we do see some of the names here. Um, you know, we do see like from, you know, Brooks and whistle from ripple. Uh, we do see down here, like global client manager, tiny trader, head of sales, APAC ta uh, Talos, managing director, independent reserve, Singapore, CEO market node and head of fixed income and strategic business development, SGX group as well. Pretty large names. And, uh, yeah, I do say like the future of finance, the future of a lot of these markets, even including like healthcare around like quant are going to be powered by digital assets. Like the, the infrastructure that we know of today is being fully like, you know, reformatted uh, to a digital scene. And it's, and it's happening all at once. And uh, also over here from Ripple yet again, the global cost of sending remittances is on average 6.3% of the amount sent the solution, uh, you know, to high rates, digital assets. Yeah, I think that when we kind of look at things, you know, why are we seeing mass adoption of on-demand liquidity services from Ripple, right? Why is XRP being spotlighted as a token to be utilized within payments? It's because of the efficiencies. You got to realize like the pain points around remittances, around cross-border payments, around, you know, just the entire financial, you know, sector. It's all plagued by such massive inefficiencies, not only cost, right? It's also like settlement times, failures, transparency. Like these are the issues that, you know, crypto technology, like what Ripple has, you know, done with RippleNet utilizing XRP are solving. This is why I say like, pay attention to the tech stack, pay attention to the solutions that are being provided by these companies. That is the end game. Those are the winning companies. XRP is proven technology. Ripple is a proven, you know, company. This is why I've always said XRP is one of my main holdings because I believe in the technology behind it. I believe in the team behind it, utilizing it. I believe in all of the partnerships, the expansions, everything to date that we have seen, even including the SEC lawsuit. Remember, they are suing, you know, Ripple uh, by, you know, selling XRP as a security, if you will. They are targeting it for a specific reason. And that reason is it's a threat. They are seeing it as a threat. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys are more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As those up that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.